What's going on, y'all? Um, this is uh, a how-to on the uh, 07 Grand Prix canister, the weird one. So I had to install the uh, just the AEM E85 pump. See the so this is what I did. So they give you um this hose right i don't never use this i use the uh which i do on a 2000 canister too i use the uh corrugated hose that's already in here so what i do you're going to need get you a razor blade a lighter flathead screwdriver and some wire cutters and then you'll need um those so um before i put this even out here everybody got their own methods of their madness there's some people that don't agree with how i do things this is just you know take it however you want to take it i'm just sharing it because i like helping people so let's move on so this is the uh stock pump it actually looks like a world Bowl 450 it's a pretty big beefy guy but we ain't using that um, so what you got, what I do is, uh, I reuse this line because as you can see, like, this is what comes with the pump and that's not, no, plus it's not really, like when it bends, it kind of like kinks. And when it's pressed down, well, it's not like 97, well, the 9703 is when that pressed down, that corrugated line it, it compresses and it and it ends up kinking so I don't I don't use that but what I do is first um this corrugated line right here be uh right there focus my dude focus it'd be right here so what I do is I'll take a lighter okay and I'll just heat around this plastic part just to make it soft. You don't need to give it a lot of heat. You just want to make it soft. And then you take this razor blade, all right? And then you'll cut like a little little slit down here just so you can get a flathead screwdriver. You know what I'm saying? And wedge it open just good enough so you can pull it out. So when you pull it out, you should be able to cut the sex. You should be able to just, you know, cut that much of it off you still got all that to work with we'll get to this part in a second but you'll still have all this to work with this slide down on like this part of the fuel pump so once you get that in um there's two parts to the pump where you take you take this once you get that hose off then you take this whole this whole top part off and then the pump would just be sitting down in the canister like this so you just pull that out and then the AEM pumps have like this rubber sleeve that goes around it. And then there's like another rubber like that right there. I just put that on. I don't put this on because I don't really want to have something that'll make the pump overheat. Because those pumps, they, they get hot. So I don't have it on Hellboy. I don't have it on my brothers. I just use this rubber piece right here. And they, they, it's been running ever since. But anyway, moving on. So then you take this and you heat this part up just a little bit you just want to make it soft and then it'll slide right over top of the pump real easy and then you take this over this over and clamp that comes with the pump and then you just clamp that shut that's exactly how i got my brothers that's how i got mine and it's been working ever since so you do that and then um well first before you do that you set this inside the, the canister then you put this part back down over top of it then you put this on and do what I just told you to do. And then as far as the wiring harness, you just take this harness off, which would be this and then that. And you just cut it. You measure it. You cut it. And then this is the harness that goes with the pump. And you just get the buck connectors. Because you get that. You ain't got to worry about, you know, E85, gasoline melting stuff because it's not going to melt that. So... That's it.
I wouldn't use heat shrink. I wouldn't use electrical tape when something that's submerged in fuels. So just use that and you're good. And then it's connected together like that. And that's that. In my opinion, when you do a fuel pump swap, it's always good to start off with a, a fresh brand new canister because it, you, you run into, you don't know how old that canister is and you got all dirt fettlements in the canister. And then you run into, when you put it back in, the fuel gauge doesn't run. It doesn't work right. So I just get a whole new canister, start off fresh, brand new everything. And then you know when you put that in, the fuel gauge will work because every, everything's brand new. But just be careful when you do this, don't make that move too much. You want that to move as less as possible. But uh, yeah, I'm in the video right here. I'm about to put this in. I'll probably do a little <clears throat> exhaust clip of um, how the car will, how the car sounds before I pull it out. Because once I put the motor back in, it's not going to sound the same because we're doing equal limps on that car. So just to give y'all an idea how it sounds now and to where it's going to sound like later. So all right, I'm going to end it here. Stay tuned for the next vid.